Hello fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I am so excited to discuss Victorian literature and why I love it so much. If things go as planned, this should be up on the first or second day of Victober, and I thought it would be a great way to kick off Victober by discussing what makes Victorian literature so special to me and just so immensely gratifying to read. I was rather surprised that I haven't made a video like this on my channel yet, but I figured now would be as good a time as any to make my own personal love letter to Victorian literature. So I took some time and thought about what my favorite Victorian books have in common, and I I've broken my thoughts down into 10 things that I love about Victorian literature. So without further ado, here they are. The first thing I love about Victorian literature is the history of it all and being immersed in the time period. I love learning about different time periods through literature, and I suppose this isn't unique to Victorian literature. It's why I love Jane Austen and also historical fiction, but the Victorian era is really my favorite time period to learn about and to read about. It's a time of so much change and innovation, and there are so many different social, cultural, political, and economic forces at work. I also can't help but identifying a little with the Victorians. I feel like their values and concerns have laid a foundation for a lot of issues that still exist in modern society, gender and racism especially. And I can't help but drawing strange parallels between the Victorian era and the globalization of our own time. The Victorian world was made that much smaller and more connected through railways and the telegraph and all sorts of curiosities on display from Britain's global colonies. And in my own lifetime, I feel like a similar magnitude of change has occurred with a more digital form of globalization, internet, cell phones, etc. I just love how there's simultaneously so much that I can relate to from the Victorian era and so much that is very different and fascinating for me to learn about. This kind of ties into the second thing that I love about Victorian literature, which is the themes that are typically addressed. Because of the history and the constant change and innovation of the time period, there are all these interesting themes that emerge. One of the biggest themes that I love in Victorian literature is all about identity. Shifting identities, threats to identity, legitimacy of birth and title. In a world that's constantly changing, the identity of the self, how others perceive you, and the identity of the country is constantly in question. There are so many different Victorian novels whose plots hinge on issues of identity in fascinating ways. There are plenty of first-person narratives and the concept of creating the self and social mobility emerges. And then, of course, social mobility becomes incredibly linked to the concept of work and the idea that if you work hard enough, you can move up in society. And so work and the Industrial Revolution are key themes along with orphans and workhouses and debtors' prisons and the relationship between worker and master. And then there are all sorts of other relationships and power dynamics that become themes in Victorian literature as well. There's the relationship between husband and wife and a massive exploration of gender during the time period, which is one of my very favorite things to read about. I love books that look at a woman's role in society, the domestic sphere, marriage as an institution, the concept of family and the home, and there are so many interesting novels that both reinforce stereotypes of gender and push back on them in interesting ways. There's also relationships on the grander scale of nationalism and empire and imperialism. And I think the most interesting part is how all of these themes sort of blend together in the books. The relationship of Britain and its colonies can be strangely gendered and paternalistic, as can the relationship between workers and masters. The groups of women, workers, and colonies or indigenous people are all sometimes infantilized and linked together in fascinating ways. 
And of course, I haven't even begun to discuss themes of the supernatural and spiritualism and the unknown in comparison to scientific advances and what can be rationalized and organized, and how all that relates to themes of change, gender, and identity. Victorian literature just has such rich and interesting themes that build and layer upon each other, sometimes even within the same book, but definitely over the course of many books, and learning about them and discussing them is so exciting. I love how the more Victorian literature I read, the more interesting and nuanced these themes become as all the novels build on each other. The third thing I love about Victorian literature are the plots. Victorian literature has some of the most intricate and complicated and interesting plot structures I've ever read. Victorian books are so well paced and so much richer and more complex in plot than most modern day novels. When giving the synopsis of a modern day novel, sometimes it's hard because you're worried about giving away a major component of the story that the reader should probably read for themselves. But when trying to give a synopsis of a Victorian novel, it's hard because I feel like I'm constantly leaving out major chunks of the book. There are so many subplots happening in Victorian novels that if you include them all, you sound like you're unfocused and rambling and it becomes confusing what the book is about and who might like to read it, and how the seemingly different plot lines make absolutely any sense together. But that's the beauty of the Victorian novel. There are so many different things happening in any one book, and they do somehow all make sense together when you're reading them. The fourth thing that I love about Victorian literature is the characters. I find that characters in Victorian literature are usually so memorable and fully fleshed out. They create such deep and emotional responses for me, and in many cases, lifelong connections and memories. There are so many characters in Victorian novels with fantastic character growth and development over the course of the novel. Their stories are so believable and rewarding to follow. But even minor characters who only appear for a few chapters of a massive book have a way of capturing my attention in Victorian novels. And within each Victorian novel, there are just so many of these memorable characters. I feel like most modern books, you'll have one, maybe two characters that really stand out to you. But in a Victorian novel, there are usually at least five or six that I'm enamored with and that stick with me long term. And maybe that's because there's often such a large cast of characters in a Victorian novel. I don't know, but they all feel so well done. Even characters who are described so briefly, in a single sentence even, or who are basically a caricature, are described with such precision and specificity that they feel more substantial than they otherwise are. And this leads me right into the fifth thing that I love about Victorian literature, which is the writing. Victorian writing is so beautiful and descriptive, but also simultaneously precise in its own way. The writing in Victorian novels, of course, varies from author to author. I love Dickens's long, intense sentence structure interspersed with his biting wit and quirky imagery. I love the beautiful, languid nature scenes as found in Thomas Hardy's writing or in sections of Bronte novels, but the attention to detail, specificity of word choice, and energy that's put into the quality of writing is consistent throughout authors and throughout Victorian novels in general. I also love the experimentation that authors allow themselves to have with their writing. The Victorian era is the golden age of the novel in so many ways. It's where the novel becomes more respected as an art form and really comes into its own, so you get all of this beautiful experimentation with all aspects of the novel. Plot, characterization, genre, which I'll talk a little more about later, but you get this sense of freedom and fun with the writing style. I love how many Victorian books insert an author or narrator into the text as their own character or to have separate discussions directly addressed to the reader. It's as simple as the famous line, reader, I married him in Jane Eyre, or it can be as complex as Dickens's little tangents to the reader and his nicknames for his characters, which almost feel like little inside jokes between the reader and the author. There's such a sense of 
fun within Victorian writing, and this amazing wit and humor even within the most serious of novels, which really appeals to me. The sixth thing I love about Victorian novels are the illustrations. Many Victorian novels are illustrated, and I really appreciate being able to interact with the text in another way. Illustrations add another layer of meaning and interpretation to the text, and as a very visual person, I'm drawn to them. It makes me wonder why more adult novels don't have illustrations in them today, because I think I might like it if they did. The seventh thing I love about Victorian literature is the mutability of genre. Genre fiction wasn't really a thing in the Victorian era, and so many books are actually a fascinating blend of different genres. Jane Eyre, for example, is a delightful blend of realism and the gothic, with some fairy tale elements even, and The Moonstone is simultaneously subtitled a romance and considered by many to be the first detective novel. Most Victorian novels are a mix of at least two genres, and I'm always impressed by the way the different genres blend so well together. I love how the Victorian novel isn't limited by the confines of genre in any way, and it gets to experiment and play loose and fast with the rules of genre fiction. The eighth thing that I love about Victorian novels is their satisfying finish. Victorian novels generally come to a really satisfying and complete ending. Most Victorian novels either end in death or their marriage plots ending in marriage. Either way, they come to a neat close where all the various plot lines finally come together. All of the mysteries are solved, all of the characters are accounted for. The ending could be rather moralistic, where all of the corrupt characters are punished with their just desserts, and the good-natured characters who we rooted for all along are rewarded. I love these concise and complete, satisfying endings, and oftentimes that's enough for me. But what I love just as much as a satisfying ending is how my brain sometimes tries to subvert the obvious with these endings, especially on a second or a third read. Take Jane Eyre's ending, for example. It ends in marriage, and at first glance, it's a very happy ending, but by my second or third reading, I start to question aspects of the relationship and begin to wonder what happens beyond the storybook ending. Is it really a happy ending, or as happy an ending as it first seems? I now go back and forth on that every time I read Jane Eyre. I know it's cliche, but when one story ends, another begins, and so when these Victorian novels end so completely, it almost encourages me to push back on the finality of that ending and wonder what new story will begin for the characters in question. The ninth thing I love about Victorian novels is their balance of pretty much everything. It's hard to believe that one book can contain so much and not become overwhelming or overwrought to the reader. But Victorian novels manage to include absolutely everything that I described so far in this video and make it work in a cohesive, meaningful, and enjoyable way. It's hard to find a modern day book that expertly balances an interesting, well-paced plot with realistic character development and character arcs, as well as beautiful writing. But pretty much all Victorian books manage to balance those three important aspects of novels. And the tenth and final thing that I love about Victorian literature is its immense rereadability. Victorian novels are so meaty and rewarding and impactful that they hold up to multiple rereads. And with each reread, I gain even more insight into the story and characters and themes and gain an overall greater appreciation for the text. I notice new things every time I revisit a Victorian novel, and the more I delve into other Victorian works, the more I can pick up new things in my old favorites. I'm always torn between wanting to explore new things and revisit my old favorites, but I find it really telling that if I were to make a list of books that I want to reread, the majority of books on there would be Victorian. In fact, if time was somehow no longer a factor in which books I could reread, there are a handful of modern books that I would want to reread, but I would choose to reread almost every single piece of Victorian literature that I've ever read in the past. So there you have it. Those are the 10 reasons why I love Victorian literature. I just feel like Victorian literature embodies so many of my favorite things about literature in general, 
and that's why it's so special and gratifying for me to read. So I would love to hear what you think of everything I said in the comments down below. Do you love Victorian literature for all the same reasons I do? Are there other reasons you would put on your top 10 list? What about Victorian literature appeals to you? Happy Victober, and I look forward to seeing you in another bookish video very soon. Bye!